Today on Locked On Red Wings, we're going to start a new series of who stays and who goes of this offseason's free agents. We're going to start with the goaltending core. And is Magnus Helberg the backup of the Red Wings for the future? As well as giving you a little bit of an update on the World Championships. A lot of players out there for the Red Wings that are doing well. And uh, because we got a little something special tomorrow, how do you feel about it Thursday? You're Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You look so proud of me. I am proud of you. You look so proud. I am of proud. Me. Of you. I'm, I'm proud of uh, of McKinnon too, but I am proud yeah. of you. Oh uh, yeah, I was, we're we're recording this on Wednesday night, and we got that game six, right? Game six yeah. of the, or is it game five? Three one series lead. Game five, mm. the St. Louis Blues, Colorado Avalanche. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. Fine. Yeah. Math <laughs> math math isn't our strong suit, uh, but no. you're listening to I'm a Locked writer. On. You, you're you are a writer. Um, and I am a talker. Uh, well, maybe not so much. Uh, welcome <laughs> back to the Lockdown Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. I'm a producer over at 97 One Ticket. Scotty over here is also a host at Lockdown Tigers and a freelance journalist for the Detroit News. And uh, thanks for making Lockdown Red Wings your first listen every single day. We are free and available on all platforms. Scotty and I today got three different things. One thing for each segment. We're going to start a new little mini series here in the off season. And uh, part up. one is today. We're going to start covering the free agents, free agents to be for the Red Wings, RFAs, UFAs, both. And we're going to talk about who stays and who goes. Segment one today, because we have other things we want to get to, is going to be um, goaltending. We're going to break down goaltending segment one. Segment two, you stay tuned. We're going to talk about the IIHF World Championships as the quarterfinals begin today as of listening to this on Thursday the 26th, and then the final segment, because we got something special planned for you guys tomorrow, bringing on a special guest for another prospect profile. We're going to do a How Do You Feel About It Thursday. So, Scotty, without further ado, let's get into our who stays and who goes of the 2022 this, offseason. This is a really program. intriguing uh, kind of like mini series here. I, I always, this is, uh, when it comes to just like pure enjoyment of, uh, like having a conversation or like debating, but debating with someone of, about sports, the the postseason, who do you want to resign and who did you do you want to keep conversation is always uh, one of my my I guess for lack of a better term favorites, but one of my more uh, one of the more fascinating areas of conversation to me. Yeah, and I mean, because like every the- team is unique, right? Everybody's in a different situation. Everybody has different goals for the upcoming year. Everybody has a different free agency plan. Everybody has a different draft plan. Like, there's, there's, uh, every single team is very unique, and and you know, one team's treasure is is another man's trash, and vice versa. So, well, and that's why I think it's so interesting to do, um, to do this ahead of like free agency talk. We want to mm-hmm. talk about who could be on the roster for, sure. for the Red Wings that it's currently on it right now, next season, before we talk about who the Red Wings could possibly bring in. And uh, we're going to limit it to guys who are not on a contract because it's hard to speculate about trades. You never know what Steve Eisenman is going to do. We didn't expect him to bring in Letty and the Delgrich right. last offseason. He just does things. But that's why we want to speculate and start with goaltending um, because it's probably the easiest to predict with one wild card. Um, but there are two UFAs here this offseason, and number one being Thomas Grice, probably the easiest player to talk about. 36 years old, had a down year, one of the worst career, career years he's had, um, a save percentage of 89%, goals against average, uh, was not that much better. Ex- goals saved above expected at negative 13, just a horrible year. Again, granted, we talked about it in the grading uh, episode, not helped out at all by the defense in front of him, but you know that's not an excuse made for you know the season he had as well. So I am of, of, am of the opinion that Thomas Grice, free agent, stays that way, not re-signing with the Detroit Red Wings. Yeah, I think that's one of the easier ones we'll do uh, at, across any position. It's certainly the easiest goalie, but it, it, I think that's one of the 
one of the easier um, positions we'll do. Yeah, there, there's not not too much more to add uh, over what you said, but um, getting up there in age, the team has been actively trying to get younger. Um, and you're, you're just, e- even like age aside, you're, you're just not going to keep a backup goalie who just had the worst year of his career. That in a vacuum is just, you're not hanging on to that. So, uh, yeah, pr- pretty easy, pretty easy. And he's also a hockey player. And it passed. It passed. Okay. <laughs> I was going to sneeze, but it passed. Uh, yeah, I, I completely agree with you about Thomas Grice. Unfortunately, this team is looking to take a step, another step forward this offseason. And whether or not, how big of a step forward you believe, not you, Scotty, but you, the listener, believe no, sure. that step forward is going to be for the team this offseason, it can't happen with Thomas Grice as your backup goaltender. And that's not meant to be a slight against Thomas Grice. You know, he had a good year last year. You know, he had a rocky first half, but second half, he really turned it on. It's just, he is not currently in the formula for the Detroit Red Wings in the, in the coming years, especially at his age. And that brings me to the next goaltender who is a UFA a goalie who, I mean, maybe we got to get like Max Boltman, who's like someone who covers the Detroit Red Wings as a beat writer, bring him on and be like, dude, what, what was the reasoning? Because you and I have talked about it, Scotty. And our, our best guess is that maybe there was an injury we didn't know about and it didn't hold the goaltender out that long. Yeah. And that's why they signed Magnus Halberg out of the KHL. The other theory is maybe they were getting a jump start on who they wanted as their backup. You know, Magnus Halberg was having a good year in the KHL. He's shown to be a good backup goal or a good starting goaltender at the AHL level throughout his career. So maybe they thought they found a diamond in the rough in Magnus Helberg, and that's why they signed him to the last whatever how many games was left in the season at the time, like less than 20. He played the final game. He didn't look bad. He didn't look great. They beat the Devils, who were also a garbage team. He had a save percentage in that game of like 860, which isn't great. Right. But is Magnus Helberg, who, by the way, is the starting goaltender for Team Sweden in the World Championships, which we'll talk about next segment, is Magnus Helberg the backup goaltender for the Red Wings next year? You know, it's, it's, it's interesting. I, I think that it is probably like a fallback option of a backup. I think that it is probably somewhere in, in the realm of, you know, they were looking ahead to next season and I think everybody knew Grice wasn't going to stick around and they thought, you know what, this guy's been really good. We got a chance to sign him. We got a chance to pounce. Let's do it. We'll go into the offseason. If we find a goalie deal that we like in free agency, then we jump all over that and no one's the wiser. And, and we have our, our backup goalie over who we sign. You know, we have our, our list going into free agency of who we want to get. But if those don't work out, then we have this dude. I think that's probably what it was. I, I think it's like a fallback option with your backup goalie, as, as if you can follow me there. And we, we talk about it, too. I mean, we, we thought when they initially signed him, our reaction was, oh, he's the Grand Rapids Griffins goalie because they had an injury. Calvin Picard went down when he was right. got, He went down when he was called up with the Detroit Red Wings, and it was on Bradstrom to try and get them to the playoffs. So we were like, okay, well, they're getting another goaltender to help make that playoff push with an expanded playoff this year, even though the Griffins weren't that great. They, had, they still had a chance. No, he was on the NHL roster. So maybe it could also be is he going to be the AHL goaltender? Did they sign him to that contract now because they had an extra contract at roster spot to kind of secure him with the organization so they right. can get him that AHL contract next season? This is all speculation, but I do think there's a future. I it's think it's a conversation. It's I a mean. conversation. I do think he stays in what capacity. I don't know. That is my Fair final enough. answer. I think what you said back up to a, a backup option for a backup goalie is a good one. I also think maybe he stays on an AHL contract because if you look at the free agents oh my god st louis just scored with a minute left to tie it at four uh yes they did <laughs> yes they did you're a little ahead of me yeah if, no, if wow. you if you look at the options there's plenty of really good backup goaltender options on the free agent market i mean you have miko koskinen who had a 903 save percentage with the edmonton oilers this past offseason you, um, I, they might go to Miko as their, their starter. Cause I don't know how much Mike Smith has left in the tank, but he's a UFA. Right. Um, yeah. you got guys like Darcy Kemper. Yeah. Yaroslav Halak. I don't know how you feel about him. You got, uh, stay away from Corey Schneider, but 
Right. You know, you got you. There are options out there that have more NHL experience and NHL success than Magnus Hallberg. So I think he stays with the organization. I don't know what capacity though. Right. No, I, I, I mean, clearly I, I very much agree with you. I think it's uh, I think it's a, a safety net for if you miss out on who you want in, in free agency. Absolutely. Um, when we come back, we're going to talk to you guys about the IIHF Worlds as the preliminaries just wrapped up and they head towards the quarterfinals. Quarterfinals will start today by the time you're listening to this episode. Uh, so stay tuned. But first, I got to talk to you guys today about Built.com. Get that little get that little graphic up. Come on. Come on. Damn come on. right you will. There we go. Proud of you. We've been asking and Built delivered. Built granola bars are here. Thank you. Built granola bars <laughs> come in three unbelievable flavors: chocolate peanut butter, chocolate coconut, and white chocolate berry. Honestly, I'm I'm on board with the chocolate peanut butter. I'm on board with all of them, man. Chocolate peanut butter is a legendary combination. You put that on a granola bar, I'm I'm on board. Want to try all three flavors? You can get a mix box at built.com right now. These are so different from the built bars and the puffs. I built granola bars are loaded with granola. It, it's the perfect combination of crunch and chewiness, but just like bars and puffs, these babies are packed with protein and covered in 100% real chocolate with 150 calories, 15 grams protein, and 4 grams sugar. Built granola bars will change your world. Built has cracked the code to better granola. They're the better, they're the perfect healthy snack to pack in your lunch, take on the road, or eat as a snack. And they are made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. So if you're waiting for a healthy and delicious granola bar to hit the market, this is your time. Head to Built.com right now to get the Built Granola Bars. Three delicious flavors to try. Chocolate peanut butter, coconut chocolate, and white chocolate berry. Do not miss out. You're, you you got to get yours today. Go to Built.com to get Built Granola Bars now. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. You killed that, man. Thank you. My The thing, the thing that chuck, made me chuckle was uh, Built Granola Bars are made with granola. Yeah. I had to stop you myself. You best believe it, too. You best believe it. Um, <laughs> segment two, Locked On Red Wings podcast. Uh, Scotty and I are going to transition now from who stays, who goes on the, uh, Red Wings, our little Red Wings mini series. We'll pick that up Real quick. again next week though, because that's, it, that's we, we do. I do think it's also practical of us to predict contracts. You know, the Red Wings have currently, they have 11 million in cap space that will increase as, uh, some numbers come off the books once free agency right. actually hits. Um, especially once, um, uh, Franz Nielsen comes off the books. He, we still own 500,000 next season, but you go from four, paying him 4.25 to just 500,000. It's going to be a huge change. Big I think with Magnus Helberg, man, I mean, he only made 800,000. If he's an NHL, if he ends up being an NHL backup goaltender, it's going to be another $800,000 contract. Yeah, for sure. I don't think anything more than that. And if he ends up being on an AHL, he's going to get a salary that's going to be less than that at the it's AHL. 700K level. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, there you go. There's the contract prediction. One year. Um, transitioning down to the IIHF Worlds, the preliminaries. Did we have... do our starting goalie? He'll, he's staying. There you go. That's cool. Well, he's under contract. So... Yeah, but like, yeah, true, true. But like, there's no way that he's going anywhere. Yeah, there no, is. no. That's why I didn't bother bringing up Nadalkovich because he's under contract for uh, right. two more No, 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 you're right. Only, only the expiring deals, yeah. Fine. Yeah. Um, so there are a total of six Red Wings currently at the world championships Ooh. during the preliminaries. Moritz Sider, mm. shocker here, has absolutely been a stud. One yeah. goal, five assists, plus five for Team Germany. He's been uh, really good, and everyone's talking about it. And they're like, wow, look at this young kid that's coming in and, and, and dominating. Yeah, And that's the thing is, like, he's playing with grown-ass adults. Like, this oh, yeah. is not... I mean, granted, the the IIHF World Championships going on at the same time as the NHL playoffs is, you know, a mixed bag of NHL players and, like, not NHL players. I mean, for instance, Riley Barber's playing for Team USA. And that's not a slide against Riley Barber, but he's a career AHL guy. So it's a mixed bag for sure. But it really shows how elite Moritz Setter already is, is that he, on Team Germany, has, 
I won't say single-handedly dragged them to the quarterfinals because it's a team effort for sure, but he has been one of, if not the best player on that team. And they're in the quarterfinals in no small part due to his effect. One goal, five assists in prelims is nothing to nothing to sniff at. He has been fantastic for them. Absolutely. Yeah, no, and, and to, again, like remembering how young he is. You know what I mean? There's not too many 21-year-olds on the planet that uh, that even against... You know, we saw what he did in the NHL. So, like, it makes sense to us. But just, it, it's it's nice to have perspective and be like, damn, like, we really have this dude on our hockey team. Well, then you look, too. So, their, their com- opponent today is going to be the Czech Republic. And the Red Wings have two Czechs on the, well, Team Czech. Uh, Jacob Vrana has a goal. Phil Pronik has plus one. Phil Pronik, yeah, I just, like, man... Even at the Worlds, like, he looks okay, but I, I haven't been wild with him. Verona looks like Verona, but, you know, I just don't, I don't really expect much out of Team Czech. I think Germany is going to come, probably roll to an easy victory here, but it's good to see that, you know, they're at least on getting a, a, a positive Corsi in these games, I would imagine. So <laughs> The Corsi King. The Corsi King. Which, like, you know what, really- well, then. They're gonna get wrecked, but they got a positive course, you guys. No, and the check, you know, Czech's a good team. They are. I mean, they oh, went yeah. to the quarterfinals for a reason, but I think just with the way that Moritz Sider, I, I could see Moritz Sider single handedly winning this game, man. It's they're looking so good. Spe- well, Moritz Sider himself is looking so good. Yeah. Um. I mean, and also good Team hockey. Germany, and that has Philip Grubauer, who's been absolutely stellar for them in this yeah. in this this tournament so far with a nine one save percentage, two point two goals against. Um, speaking of goaltenders as well, Magnus Helberg, the goalie who we were just talking about, the goaltender for Team Sweden, he has the fourth best save percentage among all goal t- goaltenders in the World Championships at 93%. And that's why, honestly, it Not may bad. have skewed a bit of my perception of what his value is, is seeing how well he's performing at Worlds. Because again, there's NHL talent at Worlds, so like Moritz Sider. Team USA's goalie is Jeremy Swayman, who should have gotten a little bit more in the conversation for Calder, but that's a different conversation. And Jeremy Swayman's killing it. But Magnus Halberg being up there, I gr- granted, Team Sweden's always going to be one of the best teams in the tournament, so he could be being helped. For he sure. could be helped out by the team in front of him. But the fact that he is up there really helped sell me on the idea that he could be on this team in this in the seasons coming. Yeah, no, I, I mean, 100%. It, it, it's hard not to. And, um, you know, like we, like we said in the first segment, we had seen what he had done before we signed him, right? And, and, and we had we had gotten a general idea of the, the caliber of player that he was, but going and seeing him play against um, talent that, you know, maybe used to play in the NHL or has had NHL experience or is, you know, high AHL-level talent, it's really nice to see. And and it definitely does kind of put in your back of your head, like, hey, like if we do miss out on who we want as a backup goalie, it might not be a bad, bad little situation here. Yeah, and I mean the, the thing too to keep in mind is so he does have one shutout. That shutout came against Great Britain. So it's not like <laughs> it, it's not as if like it he put on a, a phenomenal performance out there against a really good team. He was playing a team that generally is not competitive in world Correct. hockey's not huge in great britain so Correct. you know you got you have to keep in mind a lot of times in preliminaries when you do see these guys excel that it's because of some of the talent they're playing against that's that's the other half of that mixed bag so it's it's good to see the red wings players excelling well another one who's excelling really well is pew Suter. he's got three goals and five assists assists for switzerland yeah, big time. um in preliminaries and he is absolutely killing it um ahead of their I believe they're playing. Where is the, which tab is this? Lord above. Uh, they're playing Team USA on uh, tonight, May twenty sixth, and that's going to oh, be a really good game because I'm really, really curious because Switzerland's been a team that's been developing really nicely in recent years and becoming, I won't say a powerhouse, but competitive. I mean, in years past, you know, they were a team that didn't make it past preliminaries, and now they're consistently making these the actual elimination tournaments, and they're playing Team USA tomorrow. Pew Suter. He's been playing fantastic in preliminaries. I'm really excited to see what he can do against Team USA and Riley Barber. Team USA with Riley Barber, right? Don't yeah, no, it. like it's it's. I, I know the playoffs are going to get all the eyes, and they should. But it's it's fun hockey, man. It's fun yeah, hockey, it and, there, and there's some players across a lot of different levels, like spread out all over the world, 
uh, that, that come together and play in this tournament. So like, it's, it's, it's fun hockey to watch, man. It really is. And the man, the myth, uh, the man, the myth, the legend himself, Riley Barber. Me? Oh, no, not you. You're, you're more of just a myth. You're not a, you know, legend. <laughs> I, uh, mythical um, being, yes. <laughs> Riley Barber has a goal. So good for him. Good for him, man. Shout good out Riley Barbs. Barber. Shout out Riley Barber. The Riley Barber episode. <laughs> uh, we are going to uh, do a how do you feel about it Thursday on the other side of this break. But first, we got to talk to you guys today about Bet Online. Our partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Nice. Find all of the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's basketball playoffs, Major League Baseball scores, fights, and even next season's NFL futures. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. BetOnline, where the game starts. Any, you, you can, you're not going to do it? You're going to wait? All right, all right. This is this is what we're doing today, guys. Um, okay, segment three. That was all big um right there. I just let out. Uh, this is gonna be. My, I'm gonna try and do an umless segment here. Let's see how. Let's see how long I can go. I'm gonna counter. Can we do that? Is that something we can get in the restream here? Like a counter? Probably not. Segment three. Lockdown Red Wings <laughs> podcast. <laughs> What? That was just just a hard transition. Hard Hard transition. Ignoring Scotty. That's what I tend to do. I almost said it. I almost said it there. Uh, Dang, damn it! (laughs) No way, dog. It's so hard not to do it. No way did you just, in the sentence where you were (laughs) saying you didn't do it, you said it. That is remarkable. Dude, those vocal pauses are hard to get rid of. That tops my misspelling of whatever that word was like seven times in we're, a row. we're clipping this right like even i have to admit oh, this is this yeah, is hilarious easily. this is the easiest clip we've maybe ever had i i just it's so hard like even now talking i'm trying not to do it it's so hard to not do it it's like the focal pause is just your brain thinking trying to process what to say next correct and so I'm speaking so slowly right now because I'm not doing it. Anyways, that's one. How do you feel about it Thursday edition? Because tomorrow we're going to have a guest on as we continue our draft profile analysis. Scotty, how do you feel about vocal pauses? I I use them way too much myself. And uh, it's been something that since I got, since I got this gig and since I got the Tigers gig, especially the Tigers one, right? Because I'm alone. Yeah. Like there is no one else that can swoop in and, and fill time for me if I'm not. So I am constantly, you know, I'm talking to myself for half an hour. So I'm consistently filling time with just words or or with those vocal pauses like that. And it's something that I, I've been trying really hard to get better better at and that I'm still very terrible at, even with a lot of effort to try to get better at it. About two or three days a week, I will listen back on our episodes after we post them. And in general, not to, you know, not to sound conceited. That's a nice way of saying it. I think we do a pretty nice job. But when I'm listening to myself, it, that's the one thing that stands out, you know, the, you knows, I just said it. I literally just said, you know, and then said, you knows, right. Uh, like those things just tend to come right out of your mouth and you don't realize it. And you're listening. Yeah. Back I'm a big just, one with like, it's one that I've, mm-hmm. I've been trying so hard, like for years, there you go for years now <laughs> to, to try and, and not do. And, and I, I, I don't know. I, I'd like to think that I gotten a, a little better at it, but that kind of just tells you the state of where I was at when I first acknowledged it and tried to like make a conscious effort to get better at it because it was really, really bad, and I'm still pretty bad at it. And and it's something that I, I don't, I don't want it to be again, especially like with I've done it like six times in a sentence, especially with. You know, having my uh, a show where I am talking to myself for half an hour, like I said, it's it's very, very uh, something that I want to get better at that I'm still not very good at. Yeah. So 
What do you, you got anything for me? How do you feel about ready for this one? This yeah. is gonna be crazy. Hit me. How do you feel about bet online? Um. <laughs> <sighs> Where the game starts. <laughs> That's a banger. Uh bet online is awesome. And I think all of our listeners, if you are if, if you tend to like sports I, gambling, I hope it's that the go to place. To Nolan and I nine months ago and and put a little action on uh on on Marit Sider to to win Calder before the season started. Because yeah. we that was Making that was bank. something Nolan and I told y'all to do a long, long time ago. And uh hope you, you were it. right. Hope you did it. Cause he's about to win. Uh how do you how would how would you feel? If what would the difference in your emotions be if he were to win it versus win it unanimously versus win it but not unanimously? I wouldn't really care that much if I'm See, being I honest. Would. I think that I I don't think he's going to get unanimous, and I know it's going to make me upset. See, uh, be, he, unanimous or not, he's going to get the bulk. It's not going to be close. It's going to be a bulk. Like there's yeah, going to be some. There's going to be sure. some. There's going to be some ass. That votes bunting because he's secretly a Toronto fan. We see that Correct. we see that every year, but he's going to get the majority of the votes, and For sure. he's going to win the award. He's going to yeah. win the award, and that's all it's I just, care about. Oh, so I agree with you. That is at the end of the day all that matters. My thing is, I am too hard headed, and I don't want. I want the people that don't fold for him for first place to feel dumb about it. That's literally what I want you to feel stupid for not voting for him first. And if, I, and if there's like one or two that don't, they they will because that's how that works. And what or I they, they want, take pride in it, which is even weirder. Like I robbed this kid of some, you know, like rare feat. That's what, really weird behavior. But anyway, what I would want out of that is if somebody voted not to have more insider as the first place. I would want to see their reasoning. Like, I want to see written out, this is why more Sider. Like, the more I'm talking about it, the more I'm actually talking myself into the fact that he should be unanimous. Because he should, I, I legitimately don't know if there's a single argument for any other player to not for not name more Sider to be getting first place votes. Right, because and that's is. not that's not taking away the great seasons from guys like Zegers and Bunting, who I can admit had fantastic seasons, but Absolutely. no one you can have a great than... year and not be a Calder winner. Only yeah. one wins every year. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that more insider is easily like by his side, by, by like we're right, locked in Red Wings podcast. So of course we're, we're, we're spouting this, right? No bias aside, like more insider is clearly whatever where everyone knows where we stand on this. I, I'm just saying I will, I know it's not going to happen. I am positive he's not winning it unanimously. I know it won't happen. I know. And I know, just as confident as I am, I know it's not going to happen. I know it's going to make me upset when I find out that like eight people didn't vote for him because they wanted to to be edgy and cool. I, like, grow up. This is like when, when like Ken Griffey Jr. didn't get be, into the Baseball Hall of Fame unanimously. There's going like, to be one guy up. who values grit and grind. And he's going to vote Tanner He is no. a defenseman. That's yeah. the definition of grit and grind. I challenge you to grow up. If you don't have him first, my challenge for you is to grow up. There you go. Oh, man. How do I? What's good? How do, like, I honestly don't have another one. I've been trying to think for a while. And I feel stupid because it's so obvious. Like, there's so many. It's, it's that, that problem you have when you have so much of a variety of options to choose from. Like, you just kind of freeze. How do you, you feel about anime music on Spotify? I feel like you're trying to call me out here. <laughs> um, listen, how you feel about it. listen to Cold Not Rain. Not sure if the people know know how, your opinion on it. Listen you're to saying. Mayday by Cold Rain. That song is legitimately really, really freaking good. Also, uh, Coexist by Cold Rain. Both of them awesome songs. Anime music. Endorsed. <laughs> I like the, Indoors. I like the finger. Yes, yeah, bro. I have. Uh, if anyone is wondering, just add me on Twitter. I'll reply to it. But uh, I have, I have Brian's Spotify rap from 2021, <laughs> and it is a banger. It's a doozy. <laughs> so if anyone wants to see that, just hit, hit me okay. up on uh, hit me up on Twitter. In my defense, the main reason 
why you what did explain it? this to me for like an hour after a show one night. You were like, you know what? This is actually bogus. <laughs> and then he went it's, no, he's like, it's, it's he's not like, bogus. Their, their, uh, their criteria for what anime music is is whack. And I was like, all right, dude. It, well, and it's like anything that comes out of Japan is immediately. And we don't have to go down this. I don't need to do this to right. the listeners. Well, no, they don't so care. It, <laughs> that, is, that is weird, though, because like my Spotify rap was just five different genres of rap. That's literally yeah. what it was. And. It's weird to me that they can be so in split hairs so much in one genre and then be so general and vague in, in another genre. That's really weird to me. That's all. well, and like, I'm, so I'm for example, that it's whack. Mayday by Cold Rain is 100% big fans s- of Cold Rain here. It's spoken, I'm, I'm going through a Cold Rain phase, it's spoken <laughs> in complete English and it's metal, like hardcore metal. And it's going to be subjugated to anime genre because it's came from an right, anime. Where it's from, but it, yeah. it's in English with no discernible accent. It, it's just, it's such a good metal song. Like, generally, that's what it is. But it, it, in the end, my rap is going to say anime is my number one criteria <laughs> because it was from an anime. But it's just a good metal song. Also, all of the Persona 5 um, original soundtrack, but that's a different. You've gotten yeah. me started. How do you feel about my post episode rants? They're fantastic. I I love and appreciate all of them. We, we've talked about card games. We've talked about anime. We've talked Brian about, ho- we've talked about hockey and about, baseball. Uh, Bri- yeah, Bri- Brian has told me a lot about um about some things that he is passionate in that I'm definitely not well versed in. And I've subjected to you to that many times, and yes. I always afterwards I'm like, why did I do that to Scotty? Why no, did I put here's him my thing, that? man. Like, I genuinely enjoy listening to people talk about things that they are passionate about. So, like, I, like, I'm, like, I, I would have left. I would have been like, yeah, I'm going to bed, dude. See ya. Like, I, I would have not, <laughs> would have not listened to it if, if I thought it was, if it was interesting. So, and I appreciate that because, as you know, I'm very capable of talking for a long time. Yeah, same. So yeah, we've uh, talked about baseball and gone down that rabbit hole too. Yeah, but baseball is at least a shared interest. Like we can we sure, go on. For sure, I, I think it's more of just like sometimes we'll talk about, um, like you ask a question about like a specific, like analytic or a specific stat that's maybe not. You know what I mean? That's not a, a household stat. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean. That, that's most of our most if you ever ask me a baseball question it's usually it's usually a what does this mean kind of thing yeah which i mean you've helped me understand really well especially i think the big question i had asked you the other day was like ops i don't understand it what does it mean right. and because i understood it was a combination of slugging and on base percent percentage and i understood separately what those two things meant but together i was like i don't get how you figure out well, what's it's just good and what's bad. right. Your question was just like, I don't know what a good one is, and I don't know what a bad one is, right? Yeah. Like the like the scale of it all. Like obviously, OPS literally stands for on base plus slugging. slugging. So like it's obvious what it is, but yeah. And like on I base percentage I'll... is simple, slugging percentage is simple, and I was like, well, right. together, but like, what do, what does it mean? And then you were like, right. OPS plus. I'm like, okay, that one's. I like OPS plus because it's very simple and it's very it's it's uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Scaled. Like, it's scaled. Thank you. It's scaled, so it's very easy to understand for anyone who's just looking at it. You want to be, what, above 100? Yeah, 100 is league average. And and the interesting thing about that one is it... it it's venue adjusted, too. Yeah, well, yes, but it, it's it's fascinating because it... That means it's never set. So, like, you could have uh, 800 OPS four years in a row and have a different OPS plus every year because the average OPS in the league is slightly different venue adjustments all that yeah that's so cool man i this is why this season it, when, if you want to tie this back into the red wings but like this season i feel as if i always had confidence in my knowledge of hockey and i always had confidence in my knowledge of the red wings but this season i really feel like it's expanded because of things like advanced analytics and like yeah i've talked a lot about expected goals four percentage Corsi four percentage fenwick um i've learned recently you know expected goals above replacement you know, right. those things are such useful tools to helping people understand how good a player is like then more than just what they do with the puck on their stick. 
because there's a lot of players out there who have great value to teams that don't put up a lot of points. And those metrics are just so great. And I'm, I'm so grateful that I've taken the time to ask you quite like I, the baseball stuff actually comes in handy because a lot of, a lot of the new the hockey analytics is newer. Like it hasn't come. It, it hockey right. analytics starts in 2007, 2008. It got a lot of its basis around baseball analytics because baseball analytics, I feel like, was one of the first ones. Baseball really was do the it. front runner, like yeah. the money ball thing, yeah. And then all the other sports, just over the last like ten ish years, have have realized like, oh, there's, you know, we can do a lot of fun stuff and and re, we can re set and and completely change how we scout and analyze players, and that's yeah. You know, everybody's trying to get an upper hand on everybody. So, and I, I'm just trying, and we're both trying to just learn as much as possible. Yeah, because it's just so it's fascinating. Like, how many times when I, you know, I was like going down the rabbit hole, and I was like texting him, like, "Look at this stat from for Zadina." Look, right. Look at there, it. Yeah, there was one yeah. specific Saturday night that you. T- I remember. <laughs> <laughs> You texted me and went like, "This is something for Zadina," and I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> it was like eleven thirty on a Saturday, and I was at the I was at the ticket ninety seven one, and you were like, and I, I was saying, not home, <laughs> and you were it in your head either. I, I believe you texted me that you had correct. A few yeah, drinks. no, that's Cutting my point. Ginger yeah, that's I was it. that's my point. I was very much <laughs> not home. You texted me, and I I it was so funny because I was like so excited, and I was talking so much about it. And then you're like, Brian, I got I got a level with you here. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I have no clue what's happening. <laughs> oh, man. All right. This has gone on long enough. Um, tomorrow, guys, we're going to bring you a guest. And are we're we going to talk. Are we purposely not saying who the guest is? I mean, it's one of our like it's one of our favorite yeah. prospect dudes like that. We brought in a lot last season, too. I yeah. feel like at this that point, we haven't brought in yet this season. <laughs> no, we brought him in once. We this asked him the riddle season. too. This oh, off-season. Off season. We haven't brought right. him in that's, once this offseason. That's off my fault. This offseason, yeah. Um, yeah. I guess at this point, we're just going to stick to it. I feel yeah, like at this point, well. just revealing it. So it would be yeah. kind of. I'm going to have the most hair on the show. There, there you go. That's a great tease. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for making Lockdown Red Wings your first listen every day. Thank, uh, now make your second listen to Lockdown NHL from first round matchups to each Stanley Cup kiss. Lockdown NHL covers the playoffs like no other. Hear the latest news and opinions from local experts every Monday through Friday. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Be back with you guys again tomorrow with that draft analysis. Same time, same place. See your team every day. Every day.